That's Bully in the background with You May Kiss Your Bride. Now they are international superstars. I'm talking Reggie and Bully. And that should tell you that sometimes God can just pick you up from the loss and place you on a certain pedestal. And it's up to you to remain there. But we wish them the very best of luck. Now back in the studios, it's TV3 New Day. And we're still talking politics. We do understand that Ghana will be heading to the polls at the end of this year to elect a new president. We're not sure who it's going to be, whether uh, President Anekufado is going to retain his position as president of the country, or maybe it just might move on to an opposition. And so in that case, we're asking very important questions. In the midst of COVID-19, how protected are we? And I'm talking about the people who are going out there to vote, plus um, the electorates. I mean, everybody is involved. We should be protected. And we're kick-starting that with the NPP parliamentary primaries that's happening this Saturday, uh, the 20th of June, where we're going to see elections held in 168 constituencies. In actual fact, it's only going to be in 101 constituencies. We're going to see 375 uh, aspirants try to contest for that seat. And that's because 65 of these candidates are going unopposed, and also three constituencies um, will hold on with their elections because of some new developments. And so how is this going to play into the main elections? And honestly, looking at what would happen this Saturday will go a long way to determine how successful things are going to be in terms of the fight against COVID, most importantly. And so we have Dr. Kobe Mensah, and he's actually my lecturer from GIJ. And uh, small world, you know, today <laughs> I get to interview him. When he was, you know, yeah. <laughs> me in class. Good morning, Dr. Yeah. Kobe Mensah, and he's a uh, political marketing specialist. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. It's been, you, what, Bella. a year since yeah, we met, right? Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed very, your class, I must say. Thanks very yeah, much. He's a really yeah. cool, cool yeah. lecturer. <laughs> but let's talk politics yeah, now, you. because looking at what's going to happen on mm. Saturday, like mm. I said, it's probably going to play a major role in what happens mm. at the main elections mm. as well. Mm. Are we looking prepared? Well, uh, from the perspective that I, I do, uh, mm. obviously, I am a lecturer in political marketing. Yeah. Uh, everything campaigning, electioneering. From my perspective, I don't think we are prepared. Why do you say so? Uh, the reason being that, you know, when it comes to campaigning and electioneering itself, it's a very huge part, you know, of uh, the entire political system. And, you know, during the normal days, during uh, elections like this, you see little people sell, selling paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. you know? Little people sell food, a little people sell water. There are people who actually have bed and breakfast hotels, they give out to people, etc. Yeah. So, apart from the key players, there are other stakeholders that mm -hmm. are actually connected or they actually plugged into the whole electioneering process. Yeah. Now, you're supposed to communicate the rules of the game. COVID time, COVID, because yeah. we're not in normal time. So the person who actually sells paraphernalia, are they supposed to be there or not? Mm. You know, We haven't had any regulation, any guidelines that actually suggest how people are supposed to be connected into the process. And we're right? talking about the main elections we're, to happen. We've been end. talking about the, the, the NPP, primaries, primaries, you know, okay. roll on to the main elections, mm -hmm. all right? So what are the rules of engagement? We don't have it. And, and I actually ask myself whether we're really prepared for that, you know, mm. uh, because certainly we're not in normal times, as everybody says, S which means that you're supposed to expect that the, the EC comes out with certain guidelines mm -hmm. that we could use to guide our activities. Okay. You know? And then even, I understand that the MPP itself may have, have some, yeah, some, some guidelines, yes. but, but the point is that the EC is the one that regulates, you know, e e elect electoral services. And, you know, one of the, I, I, I sort of changed on the strategic plan from the EC. Mm -hmm. And the electoral services will be responsible for one, election logistics and management, two, election planning and reporting, three, election policy and procedures. Mm -hmm. Now, the planning and reporting and the policies and procedures are supposed to be communicated to all stakeholders involved in the process. And remember, the stakeholders are not only political not parties, parties yes. but people like us, people like those who actually provide commercial services, mm -hmm. have they communicated to them? No. Have they not? They haven't, I don't think. I haven't okay. seen any communique, I haven't seen any report that actually suggests that the EC has put out guidelines suggesting how these players are supposed to be connected. But don't we have enough them? time for that? I mean, they probably are looking at the NPP parliamentary primaries yeah. ending before 
Mm -hmm. They go ahead with that. Remember that the EC is also grappling with the yeah. whole compilation. No, of I, I don't think so. Stuff. Look, we, it, because we're not normal times, periods have been expanded. Periods for doing things have been expanded. So mm -hmm. let's take, for example, the main elections. All right. Now, uh, in most cases, it's the norm that political parties start being given permission to campaign three months to the election. Exactly. Which means that we're in COVID time, so we can't stick to three month calendar. Mm -hmm. So we we'll probably have to expand it because you're not going to have a rally, all right? Exactly. You're not likely to have a rally. In that case, we have to actually look at the other aspect of the political campaigning activities mm -hmm. and then expand them so that the visibility and an engagement could be much longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, take for example posters. When are they supposed to start doing posters? And because we're not doing rallies. Mm -hmm. Political parties are going to intensify poster, you know, uh, bills, mm -hmm. you know, at places. In that case, you need to start giving, you know, guidelines on when should political parties start putting posters. Okay. Which areas are, are they supposed to be? Because we've seen, there's a report by Ansar Latte uh, from uh, Kofi Annan, I think it was part of the peace and security studies mm -hmm. that they did. And they were talking about in 2016, they were talking about what we call poster attack. Yeah. where political parties and then even commercial firms, all right, firms would have their billboards, etc. And mm -hmm. then people would go and paste, on you know, them. posters but, on but them. But I've seen a few of such. Exactly. People would deface them. People Now, because of the intensity of the other campaigning sources or other campaigning channels, mm -hmm. we're going to have a competition. Yeah. And you're going to see a lot more MPP and DC poster competing for spaces, mm -hmm. which means that you're supposed to start demarcating and you're supposed to start communicating. When are people supposed to start putting out these posters? Secondly, you have things like uh, uh, the mass media, TV, you know, national, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, the, the channels, and of course, private channels. Okay, so if we're not going to campaign, as in we're not going to hold rallies, yeah. then you're supposed to have an expanded period for. TV advertisement and other things. But we all understand we're not in normal times. Yeah. And so maybe one step after the other? No, I don't think they are, they are prepared. I don't think they are even thinking about it. They are so fixated on register. Mm -hmm. And register is just a small part of your work. Okay. If you look at the EC you know, uh, document that I have looked at, including the, the act itself, I mm -hmm. mean, the, in the Constitution, plus the strategic plan that EC has, there are so many parts of the process that is before election processes that actually contribute to the credibility of the election, which they are not actually preparing. I know, I'm very sure that they are not preparing. Let me tell you something. The EC website has never worked you you know, have, for some was time. the last time you tried it? <laughs> I've been trying even last <laughs> night, even last night. Now, I was even complaining about the previous EC, and let me be very frank. Mm. I was very hard on Charlotte or say, even for the website, because some of the you know, the electoral data, the electoral data no, some were very aggregated, all right? Mm -hmm. And some of us, we use it for strategy building. We use it to analyze it. So, so I was even complaining about it. Now, it's even far better because currently you can't even assess the website. There's yeah. nothing there, all right? Which means that they have taken their eyes off the ball of the key thing they're supposed to do, and then they are focusing on one part of the election. Why must you do that? You have a whole deputies under you that are for operations, that are mm -hmm. for sister and sisters, electoral services. What are they doing? Okay. So you must understand that the parties involved in the election are not only political parties. Maybe the website is not of their concern, that is political parties. But they are of the concern to other people, especially those of us whose work are also related. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, those whose economic welfare actually sits on electionary. Let me tell you. I see. If you do uh, what do you call campaigns. Mm -hmm. There are so many people whose wealth actually sit on that. People sell paraphernalia, people sell food, people sell... There are huge media uh, sector. Mm -hmm. That is, those who actually do billboards, those who actually do printing of t-shirts, etc. Their economic, you know, uh, situation actually sits on election area, And it's a huge part of you but, know, but making But COVID-19 is here. I mean, mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's affecting our socioeconomic stability, if I could mm. say. And so it's making it very difficult for people to go ahead with all of these things. Exactly. And but they must plan for it. So, so for example, if we're not going to have the rallies, EC must start communicating so that these companies 
could okay. actually factor that in your budget and know that, okay, mm. there's no point in going to take a, a wholesale of a T-shirt because mm. they may not be company. Okay. But remind, mind you, company is also not only rallies. There are town hall meetings. What are the guidelines, you know, that actually suggest how political parties are supposed to hold town hall meetings? Are they are supposed they to, even hold going to hold it? Exactly. Yeah. Because we're saying ban on gathering. So mm. are they going to hold with 25 people, with 100 people? Or they're not going to hold at all? These things must be out there by now. Okay. Well, we've been joined also by Dr. H.S. Sika Anku, and he is a political lecturer um, also at the GIJ. And so, um, Doc, if you can hear us, can you please kindly turn on your video so we can see you? But we can hear you, I'm sure. Hello? Dr. H.S. Sika Anku, are you there? Um, hello? All right, so we're trying to connect with him so he can join in the conversation as well. You can yes, also join us I'm right via here. social media at TV3 Ghana. I'm right here. Good morning, Doc. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, he's trying to position his doing? camera. We hope that he'll settle so we can have a conversation yeah. with him. Can you he hear us? All right, we'll, we'll try and fix this. But okay? you, this moving on, okay, you, I think he's trying to communicate with I, us. I, Hello, I, I Doc. I can hear you. But, uh, uh, yeah, okay. I'm here. Can you, is this... We can't, we can't really hear you. Um, we'll try and sort out that situation so you can join in the conversation as well. But let me just quickly go back to Dr. Kobe Mensa. And so we're also looking at how we can reduce the spread of COVID-19 mm. moving forward. Mm. And so that is a major concern for everyone, even including citizens as well, because mm. at the end of the day, we are the ones going to the polls to vote. Mm. And so if authorities do not ensure that we adhere to the social distancing protocols, mm. then we also might find ourselves at the wrong side. Yeah. Um, of the situation. Mm. And so moving on, you're saying that we're not prepared, but we should also put in a lot of work in ensuring that the electorates are also protected. Mm -hmm. Are we not doing enough in that sense? No, of course not. The we has to be the EC. The, Still? The, of course. They, they are the regulators. They, they are the regulators of the election year. So which means uh, before, during, and after all right, the process of election year actually sits with them. So the point is that if we're in June, we're getting to July. The election is in December. Now, I would expect that the EC must have that information and start communicating. Don't forget, the election is not only in Accra. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we have a huge part of our country that aren't accessible via, you know, what you call media channels. Yeah. So how do you get a guideline and start education? Because but the EC already put out some guidelines for the compilation of the voters registered, did they not? <laughs> that, and, and that's why I'm saying start. that they are fixated by compilation of register. The register compilation is completely different activity, and then the behavior of certain is completely different. But that from plays that. a major role so, in the election. It does, but what, what I'm saying is that the EC is big. Mm -hmm. The EC has different sections. Let us know that you're doing this, and at the same time you're doing other things. But okay. currently what we see you is a fixated position on uh, what you call voters register compilation. And the question some of us are asking is that, what are the guidelines for other engagements? For example, campaigning, for mm -hmm. example, getting to the vote. You couldn't say that we have enough time, we don't have it. And as I said earlier, if we had three months for com uh, political com uh, uh, parties to campaign, it's because we have no more times where people can actually pull out rallies. Mm. Now people can't pull out rallies. So they've got to use other sources, which means that you have to actually expand the period for campaigning. Which we don't have. Which we don't have the guidelines. Is this going to affect probably the number of people that may come of out course. to vote? I mean, some of us, especially those of us who actually, you know, work within the space of electioneering and campaigning, etc. I think that we're going to have the lowest turnout ever. Mm. You know, if we do not put the process in place. We're going to have the lowest turnout. Do you think that is what's because, to blame? Or because it's the more about is, people getting tired? No, no, because the point is there's panic already. All right? There's panic already. People are already panicky about the situation. Mm. All right? And currently, the numbers that we're seeing doesn't actually give us any comfort. It means that people, you know, naturally may feel uncomfortable going out for some of these processes. Mm. So if you do not put guidelines in place to start educating and giving them confidence, you know, as a result of the planning process that you've put in place, then completely people are going to be apathetic to the process. Well, you, you have to go, but quick question before you do. So mm. we're looking forward to the NPP primaries to find mm. out who is going to either retain 
uh, the position mm. up there to contest for mm. the particular constituency. Now, we also know that 65 of these aspirants are going unopposed. Mm. Do you think this in any way could affect the party's fortunes in the upcoming national elections? Uh, it is not me saying it, but there's records, you know, that actually shows that. Now I'm hearing when, the 66. When, yeah. when parties have imposed candidate, they suffer. And majority of time, if you look at the trends, they impose candidate when they're in power. Mm. All right. So certainly, if they have imposed candidates, then it's most likely that they're going to actually suffer. The candidates can go through the, uh, what do you call, the... The primaries are right. Is that what you call it? They imposed them? They imposed candidates. I mean, we, 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 we chat with the, the political parties, you know, we chat with the, the strategies, etc. Mm. Majority of time, they impose certain candidates that they think they have some power, mm. they will some power, i.e. they feel that they can benefit immensely from them, yeah. and, they, and therefore they actually stop others from competing them. Mm. which is in itself against the democratic you know, uh, principles. But of yeah. course, political parties do that. Some for strategic reasons, because they think that you know, that candidate can actually win them the election. But that actually defeats the, the, the whole principle. If you think that they can win them elections, why are they not popular amongst the delegates themselves? Mm. Because if somebody has actually a very good relationship, and you remember, a uh, delegate's election is, is like an internal, what we call yeah. internal marketing. If you have a boss, all right, whom you hear is going out and you start jubilating, it means that the relationship wasn't good. I so <laughs> we sometimes hear, oh, this boss is being transferred and people are started jumping yeah. already. And they hear, oh, there's a new boss coming and they're jumping. So, <laughs> so if the new boss who is coming, people are jumping for them and then they're excited about the one who is outgoing, it means that you can't even win the popular vote because within them. Yeah, by the way, let me say that. Interesting session by Dr. Kobe <laughs> Mensah. Your yeah. time is up, I hear you have to go on radio Exactly, well. yeah. Well, let yeah. me say that the judge position is agent, so I have to clarify that. Okay. And then, of course, then let's do that quickly. Legon is my okay. full-time. Okay, all right. Yeah. So then he, uh, Dr. Kobe Mensah is a political mm. marketing specialist. Thank you so much for joining us. Excellent. We'll try brother. and connect with Dr. H.S. Tikankwong <laughs> as well uh, when we get back to see if he can also share his opinion on the national elections and also the NPP parliamentary primaries that's happening this Saturday. Keep watching. It's TV3 New Day.